Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Thursday, May 13th, 2021. We are finishing up our book by Reverend Randy Elkhorn. It's a small little biblical um, pamphlet, Biblical Answers to Common Questions About Heaven. Today's question is, can those in the present heaven see what's happening on earth? Randy writes, the answer is yes, at least to some extent. The martyrs, after they are in heaven, call out, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Revelation 6, 9 through 11. Clearly, these people in heaven not only remember what happened to them on earth, but they also know that God hasn't yet brought judgment on their persecutors. They know something of what has happened and what has not happened on earth since they died. Doesn't that suggest they can see events on earth? When Babylon is brought down, an angel points to what is happening on earth and says, Rejoice over her, O heaven. Rejoice, saints and apostles and prophets. God has judged her for the way she, the way she treated you. Revelation 18.20 The fact that God specifically addresses people living in heaven indicates... Or no, that's the prophet. Wait. No, Revelation. In heaven indicates they're aware of what's happening on earth. When heaven's saints return with Christ to set up his millennial kingdom, Revelation 19, 11 through 14, it seems unthinkable to imagine they would have remained ignorant of the culmination of human history taking place on earth. The picture of saints in heaven blissfully unaware of what is transpiring on earth is baseless. After all, God and his angels and the saints themselves are about to return for the ultimate battle in the history of the universe, after which Christ will be crowned king. Those on earth may be ignorant of heaven, but those in heaven are not ignorant of earth. Of course, in the eternal state, we will not merely see what is happening on earth, but we will live out our daily lives on the new earth. So I talked about this Sunday that, um, you, know, the, you know, the martyrs, the saints, the people in the present heaven, which remembers a temporary layover until Jesus comes back and then brings the new Jerusalem and renovates the new earth where we'll spend the rest of eternity. But until then, we go to the present heaven where there's things to do and people, and, you know, we will recognize the people. Um, you'll see Peter and Paul and Grandma and Grandpa and dogs and animals and trees and all of that stuff. But will they know what's going on? Well, of course they will. This is, you know, there's three or four scriptures, probably more than that, that suggest they know what's happening. But here's the cool part. They get to see how God is working that's pretty cool. So, you know, you might say, well, you know, does my grandma in heaven know that I'm battling this cancer? Yep. Well, won't that make her sad? No, because she's watching what God is doing for you that maybe you can't see. She's watching what's happening and she's seeing it from an eternal perspective, from a God's perspective, because Jesus is right there with her. So, also, you know, for, well, you know, does um, does my uncle in heaven see that, you know, somebody's being abused, his wife is being abused by a new husband? Yes. Well, won't that make him sad? Again, he'll see from an eternal perspective. And you say, well, Jesus said there will be no more tears. That's on the new earth. In the meantime, we pray to God and we invoke the prayers of the saints. We don't pray to saints because saints can't do us any good. <laughs> God can do us good. Jesus is the one who can do us good. Jesus is the intermediary, intermediary, the high priest. He's the one that hears our prayers and sends them up to God. He's the, the high priest. And the saints are praying with us and praying for the situation we're praying for. So they have to know what's going on. And also the scripture about we will all give an account of um, what happened to us on earth. So, you know, the people in heaven are not, you know, they know what happened on earth. They know what's happening on earth. But they're seeing it from a different perspective. They're seeing it unveiled. They're seeing it um, through God's eyes. And they're going to be able to see how God has been working all of this together for all the way through to the when Jesus returns. And so um, they have to see what's going on. So I think that's great to know because, you know, your grandmas, your grandpas, your loved ones that are in the intermediate heaven are cheering you on. 
you know, remember, you know, when one sinner repents, there's a celebration in heaven. Well, how can they celebrate if they don't know what's going on in, on earth? So, you know, that's not a sinner who has entered heaven. It's a sinner who repents on earth. The saints rejoice. They have a party. So they also see what's going on. And yeah, they might be, um, they might, they know, we know that they'll see what's going on, but they see it from that eternal perspective. So God is there with them in the presence of God. And so nothing outshines the presence of God, even if they see some of the bad things that are happening. Um, they know that God is still working. God is working in that person's life, in that situation, in that country, all of that. And they get to see that, which we do not. So when we pray, we pray to Jesus and God. We don't pray to the saints, but we do invoke the saints' prayers, which means we know that they're praying with us. Um, tomorrow we will hear or learn the answer to the question, if people in heaven are aware of bad things happening on earth, how could it really be heaven? So that kind of talks a little bit about that as well. So um, it's a valid argument, but again, I just kind of answered some of that, um, that uh, they'll know what's going on, but they'll be able to see from an paternal perspective. So that's all I know. Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be talking about um, our relationships in heaven. You know, the whole marriage, there will be no marriage in heaven between a man and a woman, but there will be marriage, one marriage in heaven, and that's between Jesus and his bride, the church. So we will, you know, all know our relationships, we'll know, you know, our spouses, we'll know people, but we won't be married to them, meaning we won't, we won't need that marriage because the marriage on earth points to the marriage between God and Christ. That's kind of what it's about. And I remember when I worked on an Emmaus walk, they put up a triangle and they put you, your spouse, and God. And the closer you and your spouse get to God, the closer you get together to each other. So we know that the ultimate relationship in a marriage is to focus on God. And as we focus on God, we get closer to each other. And when we get closer to each other, um, we are very close to God. And so that perfection in a marriage is based on Jesus and his bride, the church. So, but yeah, we will still know people. We will have relationships. We will have, um, you know, uh, friends. Like one example that Randy gives in his book, Heaven, he says, you know, do you ever um, just write letters to a person, but you've never met them or you've only talked to them on the email or <clears throat> even by the phone? And in heaven, you'll, you'll be able to spend time talking to them face to face. So I think of those Compassion International children that we've sponsored over the years. Won't that be cool? to be able to see them and to um, talk with them and to learn all about their life and um, how each of us were praying for each other. I think that will be kind of cool to, 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 um, to talk to people that we know, but we've never met them face to face. And then there's the relationships that are broken. If God's going to renew the earth and make all things new, then why wouldn't he make that relationship new? And so I think you start out with the clean slate. You say, well, then how can you not remember things? Well, we're talking about the new earth and our focus is going to be on the focal point, which is Jesus. And so there won't be bad things happening in a relationship anymore. They'll be all good. So if your husband bugs you because all he does is sit on the couch after work and flip through the channels on the TV, you want to smack him. <laughs> There'll be none of that desire to do that in heaven. <laughs> Although you'll see him and you'll know him and you'll be closer to him because that perfection will have happened. and uh, But you won't be married to him. So there you go. Also, um, there's the question which is on everybody's mind when they talk about heaven is how old will we be? What age will we be? Well, I hate to tell you, but everything's speculation because there is nothing in scripture that tells us how old we will be. However, we do know we will be in resurrected body. Lots of theologians believe that we'll be in the prime of our age, like Jesus was, somewhere between 30 and 33. Um, but then people say, well, what about, you know, a child that I lost when they were 10 or 12? Um, well, maybe they'll appear as 10 or 12, and you, as their parent, get to watch them grow to that peak age. So that whole August, was it Augustine? One of the one of the fathers of the church thought that there was a peak age between 30 and 33. Um, 
and because uh, Jesus was resurrected at that age, and he, you know, so um, all I know is that I'm beyond the peak. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the peak, but I know that as I get older, there's things that I didn't know at 30 that I know now, some years later. <laughs> so I've matured, I've gained wisdom, you know, but there are some parents who haven't had the opportunity to see their children grow. And so why wouldn't they get to grow in heaven? I mean, on the new earth, you know, we're, we're resurrecting the new earth. So we aren't, Jesus is. <laughs> um, so why not? But again, there's no scriptural support. One thing that Randy does mention is that um, DNA. DNA is really kind of cool. I mean, you can pull DNA out of a pharaoh that's died thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And if you wanted to, creepily, create a clone out of that DNA. So that DNA to Randy suggests that maybe we are at that prime of our life in that certain age. But we'll have the wisdom and the maturity of people that are much older. So all we know is that our bodies will be in great shape and we won't have pain. And we know with old age comes pain and bodies don't function like they used to. That won't be in heaven. So, um, or at least we won't be in pain in heaven. So that's kind of where we're at. I think it would be really cool to meet my great, 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 great grandma at age 30. And we're both 30 and we're hanging out and we're, you know, going through the shops and we're looking and we're talking and she's telling me about whatever war she went through. And all I did was read it in the history books. I think that'll be really cool. So again, up for debate. And again, I've never been to heaven. So um, we'll take what we know. We'll take what we have gleaned from this um, this uh, sermon series so far in heaven. And we'll take what Randy um, is talking about. And uh, we'll let you guys make up your own mind. Because again, no biblical support for what age we will be. All I know is that we're going to be working. God help us if we're 98 and we're crippled. You know, <laughs> we're bent over. I don't think so. How are we going to be able to serve God and worship God and, you know, help serve and work and all of that when we're 90? So I kind of lean towards there might be a peak age. But again, we don't know. So that's one of those questions. We just have to have faith that God's got that all figured out. But we'll still discuss it and talk about it. And we'll talk about our relationships and most importantly, our relationship with God. And uh, that's first and foremost. But that doesn't mean we lose relationships with others. I mean, we'll recognize our loved ones. We'll know who they are. We'll remember um, who they are. So why wouldn't we um, have a better relationship than we had with them on earth? Seems plausible. So, yeah. And when is this sermon series done? I'm hoping soon because it's getting more difficult. So <laughs> join me this Sunday at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. in person or 9 a.m. right here, live stream on uh, Kingsley United Methodist Church Facebook page. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.